Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Low Vision Device and Vendor Expo. We have a couple really great uh, speakers planned for today, but before then, I just want to thank everyone over at the Washington National Eye Center and the Georgetown Ophthalmology Program for helping put this on with the Prevention of Blindness Society. Um, they've done a really incredible job helping us plan this. Um, and we just got done with our symposium with doctors, which went really well, very smoothly, and um, I'm hoping this will today as well. So what we have planned for today is we have three vendors here, the Prevention of Blindness Society Low Vision Learning Center, Vespero, and Esight, and they're all going to do a brief presentation to everyone. Once we are completed with that, we are going to have breakout rooms so you can go and ask questions to whichever group that you want to ask. And we'll explain how you can do that when we get to that point. So um, without further ado, I do want to hand off to my colleague, Ms. Tara Aziz, who's going to talk a little bit uh, about who else is going to speak today and also about the Prevention of Blindness Society Vision Learning Center. So Tara, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sean, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, the two vendors who will be joining us are from Vispero, um, Jerry Marandon, and from Eastside, Samuel Peloso. But first, I'm going to talk about our POB Low Vision Learning Center. Okay. Can you all hear me well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the, goal, the goal of the center is to provide support, hope, and information that clients needs, need to maintain their independence and their life quality. We do this by working with them individually, addressing their unique challenges, and finding solutions that work best for them. The center started as a place where people could come and try out visual and non-visual aids. And now, in addition to that, we are a resource to call and get information about anything related to low vision. Our strength is information gathering and information dissemination. I will go over the major categories of resources that are available. For instance, reading. And for many people, not being able to read the newspaper, the medication bottle, the mail, um, all of that is a major issue. And this is the first thing people would miss when they start losing their um, eyesight. So we show them how to access the state libraries for the blind, mm -hmm. how to get the weekly New York Times large print edition, and also the many audio options that are available in our area. Um, and we explain like how to register with the National Library Services for the Blind, how to access the Metropolitan Washington Ear and the National Federation for the Blind Newsline, the NFB Newsline. And if clients are interested in getting a handheld or an electronic magnifier, we have several of them at the office where they can try out and see which one works for them before buying. So we show them um, where they can get them from the vendors or also the government agencies that can support if it's useful work. Um, we also show clients non-visual items like um, talking clocks, bump dots, and also like address guides, check and check guides as well. Um, we have some lights um, at the center, like some lamps, desk lamps, gooseneck lamps or floor lamps with different kinds of light bulbs, just for them to see which one works best for them. And with so many options out there, one honestly can become quickly overwhelmed and not know where to start. And this is where we can come in and provide some structure to all that. I just want to say that we don't make sales or have any kickback from sharing these magnification or technologies. We just want to inform and share what is available and help clients find what works for them best. 
Um, POB also, we lead some support groups in our area. We moderate several of these groups where people get together, discuss a particular topic related to low vision. They learn from one another and share information useful for all or simply support each other. Many friendships have been forged over the years um, through these support groups. In some, we provide support, information, and hope through our service. I would just like to tell you a bit about the accessibility features um, like I personally use on my iPhone, and I would like to share with you and one particular app that is very useful as well. So usually what I have on my iPhone, for instance, everything has to be kind of big and bright so I can work on it. Um, the brightness is like 60% or 70%. The text size needs to always, here's the text size, always big, about 80%. I scroll, um, I toggle the bar. Bold text, of course, for me to see better. And then I go to accessibility features. And here again, I, I use all the display, everything which is big and bold has to be used. And there's a cool feature in the iPhone and I mean, in all the smartphones, which is the spoken content. And if you enable it, it reads for you what is on the screen. Um, so this is quite handy if like a text message you cannot see or even an article or um, something on the internet that you cannot see. With this feature, it helps you with that. I will show you the magnifier app on the iPhone or on the smartphone. Um, so this is like the back of a book and you can just use it and increase um, the font as much as you can. You can also increase the brightness as much as you want to and the contrast as well. And for people who prefer inverted colors, they can do that as well, like black on white or red or whatever they can see for them would be easier to see. Um, so this is the magnification app, which is available in all smartphones. If you don't have your handheld magnifier ready, you can just use this one. Another app I would like to talk about is the Seeing AI. And this app can read again the document for you. Product. Which short text. I don't know if you can hear it or not, An but astonishingly because the rich zoom is on, lucid, but it's, profound, I can hear it and it's reading urge everyone to surprises on. and self-help value. You hear it? Jim okay. Hold, the New York Times book. So in this the can international read. Best and here I have thinking, biscuits. Best by so this will so read why consumer and tell me what this is. Prop McVitie's Digestive Wheat Biscuits, the original. So this tells me what the biscuit is and it helps me out. Okay, okay we're done with you. Um, so I just wanted to show you these um, apps and magnifiers. And now I would like to present our two vendors and I, would, I will start with Vispero, which is the parent company of major devices and um, aid brands such as Optalic, Freedom Scientific, and Enhanced Vision. Um, Mr. Jerry Marinden will provide a few examples and demos of the wonderful products they have. Um, after Jerry, Samuel Peloso from eSight will be talking about their um, wearable headsets that can be a good tool for many with reduced vision. Jerry, would you like to take the floor? Oh, appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm Jerry Marinden. Can you all hear me? Is my sound working well? Yes. Perfect. Thanks so much. So again, I'm Jerry Marinden uh, with Vespiro. And uh, what's funny is it's kind of, kind of, it's going to be deja vu for me because we just did a mini presentation of this to doctors about 10 minutes ago. So I'm trying to think in my mind, what haven't I gone over and make this for end users for the, for the consumers? But uh, needless to say, let me also share a screen real quick as I'm talking again. I'm Jerry Marinden. I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, grew up right next to Chevy Chase Circle, right next to the Friendship Heights Metro Station. 
And in 2010, my wife and I moved to Charleston, South Carolina. So with, if, if, if coronavirus or COVID wasn't here, I would be commuting back to Washington, D.C. or handling all the states in between for end users, K through 12, doctors, uh, veterans, and uh, I primarily handle the federal government. Uh, when it comes to physical end users, we use a dealer network, and some of you might know uh, Vision Support, uh, the resource center that you're talking to right now, but Vision Support is Scott Holden. I know he works uh, with many doctors and many end users. He's up in the Silver Spring area and been in business 30 years, but he's our low vision distributor. And uh, the Spiro is the holding company or parent company to Freedom Scientific, which is the software uh, division, which is uh, JAWS the screen reader, which is speech and braille for people that are blind, uh, Zoom text, which is the screen magnification, and uh, which is bigger, smaller, changing color. And putting JAWS and Zoom text together, we get Fusion. Fusion is the low vision product and the screen reader, uh, speech and braille running together. Uh, currently, we're on version 2021. 2022 will be released at the end of the month. Some of the new features that will be out in 2022 is a sound splitting. I believe that's what it's called, but sound splitting. So right now, with a version 2021 or before, uh, you would have to have a headset uh, in your ear listening to your JAWS or your Zoom text or your Fusion speak what's on your computer, meaning you'd be doing like uh, email and that would be talking to you. And in the other ear, without a headset, you'd be listening to this online webinar, whether it's Teams or Zoom. So this sound splitting feature now, now, is a, now allows you to take a single stereo headset, just like I have here. In my left ear, I would have the sound from my email. And in my right ear, it would split and I could be listening to this Zoom session. So that's a neat feature that's going to get people uh, probably a lot more productive. That way people don't people around you don't have to hear what you're listening to. So you get a little bit, a little bit more privacy. Again, 2022 version uh, is up on the web if people want to try it. It'll run in a 40 minute mode if you do not have a current 2021 license. Uh, home annual. So this is this is. Um, this is the software that is really geared toward the consumer. Uh, the professional version of JAWS, Zoom Text, and Fusion are in the several hundreds of dollars, up around eight, nine, a thousand dollars. And they do a lot of uh, things that you probably wouldn't need at home. For example, logging into, uh, I, let's say I work at the federal government and I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, security and I'm, tell and, and I'm going in and I'm logging into servers nothing to do with you. So what we did is we took a home version of the software, put it up at the Freedom Scientific store. So the JAWS home annual, one year is $95. So you can see there's a big difference in the price. It's still a full functioning piece of software, but it's available to a consumer for $95. Zoom text is $85 a year and the Fusion is $170 a year. So again, a lot more manageable when it comes to, to money. And I think about 95, my math may be off, but it's about $8 a month. And again, that link that's up, up top here, the uh, Freedom Scientific Store will get you there. Sponsored, now I, I put this slide up here. I don't know if we have anybody that's actually going back to school, but I see this a lot with uh, students that are attending a university, something like Montgomery College, for example. Since Montgomery College uses our software, they use the JAWS, they use the Zoom text, and they use the Fusion, and they run it at the school, the most current version, 2021. They, we allow their students, when they click where it says check availability, that takes you to a page. And if you type in your, for example, Jerry Marindon at montgomerycollege.edu, the edu is very important because that's the college web address for email. That will take you to another screen that says, yes, Montgomery College is enrolled and you are allowed to use that home version that I just talked about on your PC for free. That way you're using the most current version at home on your own personal PC and it will work with your school, uh, whether you're doing EBSCO host or you're doing any of the online learning. That way you're using the same current version that the school's using and that's available. Keyboards, a lot of folks don't realize that we actually have high contrast keyboards uh, that work with Zoom text, work with JAWS, work with Fusion. But just from the image here, you can see that they're larger letters, 
brighter text. They come in two flavors, the white on black or the yellow or the black on yellow. What's important about this is if most low vision users use a mouse and they're scrolling around and, and if you don't have your zoom text to start right away and, and the pointer's not big, using the F1 key to F12, those are the keys right along the top of the keyboard. Each one of those is a function key. So just to keep it simple, F1, if you were to push that, that would turn on Zoom text for you. So it's a very easy way with some of these hotkeys to use the Zoom text or the Fusion product. Other examples would be, I wanna make the screen bigger, I wanna make the screen smaller. Uh, and again, there are icons right above those letters. Um, as I said before in the previous uh, session, as people are moving home and the, and the office, the home becomes the office, lighting is real important. So for example, Example, in this office right here, in my home office right here, I only have two lights. So light can be an issue. I have the window behind me, which is great during the day, but if I'm working in the evening, clearly the lighting's gonna change. So we have, for example, a, a Stella Task Lamp. And as I mentioned before, the Stella Task Lamp has some, has 10 different lighting settings. Um, additionally, it's a gooseneck. So in my office here, I mess around with, and I'm gonna reach down again, I did this before kind of disappeared. I do a lot with uh, hobbies, like, I don't know if you can see this. This is a comic book. I know it glares a little bit, but this is something where I, I like to look at the different colors. I like to read it. I like to keep it in good condition. I'll use that Stella lamp right above my, right above my comic book. So on the cover, it's really glary and glossy because of the colors. I might use a different color setting, something, something softer. And then as I turn the page and the pages become regular text, this one happens to be from 1960, so it's got a little bit of age on it. I might use a, a, a lighter, or a stronger, or a brighter color setting. And just with one button, I'm able to do that. And the gooseneck allows me just to move it around with one hand and get the lighting just the way I want. The light at the bottom is by another company. It's called Stella. That's another manufacturer. It's the same theory. The only difference is this light has a battery in it, meaning when I'm using this here, I, can, I don't need to be near a plug. I can literally pick it up and go location, room to room, task to task, and I've got about three hours of battery life in that. I don't have to worry about being near an outlet, but lighting is super important, so it's something to think about. Those are, those are tabletop, and they make them in the floor lamp. So as you can see, the floor lamp's a bit taller, and again, you're going to get a little more uh, height on that. People know us for rubies. Uh, we make the ultra portable under the Freedom Scientific brand. They come in a four, a five inch, seven inch uh, screen. These are tactile uh, devices. This, these are for folks when the traditional lens, and, and you guys know what I'm talking about. These are the old tried and true, very simple. You take it out, the larger the head, the lower the magnification, but you know, you'll see these at like a Hobby Lobby. This happens to be a, a higher end Schweitzer German quality uh, lens. But again, one set magnification and it's, it's easy to use. When you get into this world right here with the rubies, we're now allowing you to have multiple color and contrast settings. That's what the blue buttons do. So like a white on black, black on white, yellow on black, just like you saw as an example with those keyboards. And again, lighter, brighter, bigger, smaller, and the form factor of the screen gives you a little bit more real estate. On the same page, we have a Compact 10. The reason I put this here is because some of the younger generation is getting a lot more savvy. They don't want the buttons. They don't want to feel the tactile. So they, they want the touch screen. This is the same sort of technology, meaning I want my text bigger, smaller. I want to be able to change the color, but I'm not using buttons. I'm now using the touch screen. Kind of what people are doing on the iPhone. The iPhone is all touch screen. These are, these are uh, portable magnifier, magnify, ma excuse me, magnifiers. These are kind of like a laptop where you'd have it on the table and you'd open it up. So this, is, this right here is the stages of the previous model. So say, number one is the magnifier, the topaz flat, and the person through two to six in, in the pictures is opening it up until you have a screen that is facing you and a camera that is facing down at the table. That's what the picture number six is doing. And this magnifier right here, you can take your print material, my comic book, place it underneath, turn a knob, and it will make that image of the comic book, whether it's the text or the picture, a lot bigger. I can make it smaller. I can hit a button. I can make it 
uh, you know, change the color and contrast of that image. These are transportable devices. This is now we're getting into larger screens, meaning I need a lot more real estate, right? What you see on a foreign screen might just be very, very small, but now I need something with 20 to 27 inches. Maybe I need to look at the entire newspaper opened up. And that's what these devices do. Larger screen, same functionality with regards to bigger, smaller, changing color. Uh, the Acrobat, which is the device on the right, that has a camera with, um, with, the, with buttons, sorry, I lost my train of thought, with physical buttons on it. So I don't need a remote. Once I reach my hand up and I've got that camera and I've aimed it down and I've manipulated in such a way that I'm looking at the text I want, I can then hit a button there and make the text bigger or smaller. I don't have to take my hand off that camera and come back to a remote. So again, we're just getting a little bit bigger in the real estate, but these are the magnifiers. These are what I call set it and forget it. These are the workhorses. You might see these in a library setting. Uh, you might see it at some place like the Social Security Administration where they're running these 10 hours a day, six days a week during tax season. Again, what we're doing is we're taking print material and we're making it bigger or smaller, changing color. Uh, the big difference here is the Topaz is gonna come in a 20, 22, 24 inch monitor with the controls along the bottom. The Topaz camera only, which you see on the left, this is strictly the magnif uh, strictly the the, uh, the magnifier. This allows a user to plug in their own television and or computer screen. So I've seen people for whatever reason put screens as large as 50 inches on it. I don't know if it works for you, but it has the input to do it. So again, people that want a lot more real estate, if that works for you, you are able to charge the, uh, ch uh, to choose the, the size of the screen. Again, as I mentioned before, same idea, but now what we've done is we've taken scan and read technology, OCR. We've now put that into the Topaz and the enhanced vision products like the DaVinci. <clears throat> and as you can see from the pictures in the middle where it says full page text to speech, I've now taken an eight and a half by 11 document, placed it under that camera, I'm hitting a button, and within a second it scans it and it begins reading the document to you. So when the eyes get a little bit of tired because you've been looking at the screen too much, you don't want to do reading, you can have the machine read for you. And the same form factor in that portable 10 inch called the Compact 10. I told the story a little while ago going to a restaurant where, the, where, they, uh, where they keep it kind of dark, of the lighting's down and they have a very large menu. It's a restaurant's called Bonefish. It's a, an extension of uh, Outback. Uh, that's up in Gaithersburg where I used to live up near Germantown, Maryland. And I took this compact 10, placed it down on the menu. The lighting was a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, as I said, uh, dim, but the magnifier has a light in it. So it illuminated the page. I was able to take the camera, touch the screen and have the menu scanned and read to me. So it was pretty neat. And again, I've now got some videos. I'm happy to share this, uh, this PowerPoint uh, with the group. Uh, you're welcome to click any one of these and watch it in, in the comfort of your own home. And I think, for example, so you don't have to watch the whole thing, I've actually tagged the time limit on it. Some of these are only two minutes long. One last thing before I go, because I think it's important. I just wanted to go to the training site. So for anybody that actually uses our software, whether it's the JAWS screen reader, whether it's Zoom Text Magnifier or Fusion, if you went to freedomscientific.com slash training, this is, this is where we post all the current information. So you see things like training events. If you wanted to learn, for example, if we just click that, you'll see there's some upcoming trainings coming on. I think one that's gonna interest people if you're a computer user, <clears throat> right now I'm running Windows 10. Microsoft has said they're coming out with Windows 11. So here's our session on Windows 11 and JAWS. I think you'll see other things in there coming uh, in the future, whether it's Zoom Text or Fusion, but that just gives you an example of some of the upcoming events. Webinars on demand. This is, for example, you missed that schedule, Windows 11 and JAWS. This is where you can come in and take a peek at your own leisure, at your own pace, in the comfort of your own home. Here's an important one, Zoom text. So if you downloaded Zoom text, you're new to Zoom, new to Zoom text, and you can't get a trainer, you can't get someone to help you, you could just click this Zoom text link and it would be the beginning of an online webinar for you. 
And there's different ones in here, whether it's using the software with YouTube, using it with Facebook, it's not all about employment like Excel. There's a lot of good resources in here. Down here is podcasts. I use this. We have something called the FS Cast. Uh, we're on number 205, and this is where we come out, I believe it's almost weekly, and it's sort of what's new, what's coming out, what's new with the company. Uh, 205, uh, uh, Podcast 205 has uh, a little bit of, of, of a blurb from the software developer, the product manager, uh, Glenn Gordon and Eric Damry, on the new features of, let's say, JAWS, Zoom Text, and Fusion 2022. Uh, there's documentation, certifications, web tutorials. This is this is huge. And again, I'm not going to go through it all. Yeah, I'm going to pause it. But again, if you come down into the JAWS, and this is where I want to be right here just to show you. There's a section on Zoom text because I get a lot of low vision customers that say, you know what? I wish there was a resource where I could say, you know what? I forgot how to increase and decrease magnification. I don't have the keyboard. What's the quick reminder? If you came in here and you click this, this is a very quick two or three minute video reminding you how to do it. Here's color enhancements. Here's the app reader. You don't, you no longer have to listen to a 45 minute training session. These are just the bullet points on what you want. So this is a very good reference and a very good point. And it's free, F-R-E-E, -E, you don't pay for these, okay? So again, I'll, le I'll leave it at that. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But other than that, I think I am on time. If I took too much, I apologize. Thank you, Jerry. This was a really great presentation. Um, next, we have Mr. Samuel Peluso from eSight. Sam, go ahead and uh, get started whenever you're ready. Great. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Sean. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit brief here. I apologize. My internet's cutting out, and I hope I don't drop. Um, but my name's Sam. I am the clinical account manager here at eSight, and I'm going to chat a bit about the eSight device. eSight is an electronic wearable headset that can enhance vision for folks that have central vision loss, but additionally for some other conditions that benefit from magnification. So again, just in case my internet drops, I am going to share my screen here with my contact information. Um, just so, can everyone see that? Um, just in case. Yes, great. So my email, my phone number is up on screen at samuel at esiteeyewear.com and there's more information at esiteeyewear.com for anyone interested. So the eSight device is, as I mentioned, an electronic wearable headset. It was designed for macular degeneration and Stargardt's disease. And the way this device works is it's an electronic headset with two screens that sit right in front of the eyes. I'll show you this up close in a minute here. <clears throat> but the way this device works is since the screens are so close to the eyes, they provide extra stimulation to the back of the eye. And since the screens are a little bit brighter than normal, they've got a little more contrast than normal, this provides more information to the brain, and it can trick the brain into thinking that your blind spots aren't there. So, like I said, if you've got uh, macular degeneration, Stargardt's, if you've got maybe a retinal detachment or diabetic retinopathy, uh, and these blind spots make it really hard for you to see faces or read words, with the eSight device, those blind spots may appear much smaller or they might disappear completely. Now, there are a number of other features built into this device, including magnification. So if you have an eye condition that benefits from magnification, eSight may work for you as well. In any case, we recommend you try the device, test it out, and see if the device is something that can help you before you purchase it or start fundraising for it or any of those things. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second here just so that you can see me up close. So, uh, I have one of these eSight headsets with me. For those who can see, this is, it's a gray headset. There's a visor on the front that looks a bit like sunglasses. And if you look on the inside of the visor, you can see the two screens that the user would look through. These actually adjust left and right. So it fits almost any head shape, no matter how wide or narrow your eyes are. Now, if I want to put this headset on, 
there's this halo that fits over my head. It's got some comfortable bands in the middle and I can adjust the size of this. At the back, we've got the battery. This hangs right below the neck. You can shake them, see how much power they have left. Each of the batteries that comes with the device will last around three hours, depending on what you're using the device for. So this halo wraps right around the back of my head. I just slip it over my head here. The battery hangs right above the back of my neck and the front of the halo sits right behind my hairline. When I first put the headset on, this sunglasses looking visor kind of hangs above my forehead. And I can walk around fairly easily, just as easily as I normally would without any tools, just by wearing the headset like this. But when I need to use the eSight headset for something, all I have to do is pull down on this visor and it comes down in front of my eyes. Now, while I'm wearing this visor, I still have access to all of my peripheral vision. I can still see to my left and to my right. And I can still see down by my feet. And that's because just like a pair of sunglasses, this device sits slightly in front of my eyes. In fact, if I have a distance pair of glasses that really benefits me, I can wear those glasses right underneath this headset. Now, People, this device is designed for mobility. So you're, if you're an individual who uses, who, who likes to get out, who really values their independence, a lot of people will use this device for activities like that. We have people who like to bring them to sporting events. If you like watching a soccer or a football game, you can wear this device in the stands. You can even get up and walk to the concession stand and buy yourself something while you're wearing the headset. A lot of people take this device to the grocery store. They'll use it to help them see the items up on the top shelf while they're pushing their cart around. But you can take it to a Starbucks or a McDonald's and you can use it to read the menu that's hanging behind the counter. Or you can use it while you're walking around the sidewalk if you're trying to catch a bus or just see whether or not the walk signal across the street has changed yet. So, it's rather simple to use this machine. Like I said, you just have to put it on, pull it down over your eyes and then turn it on. And when it turns on, a camera on the front will come right on and you'll see what the camera is seeing on the two screens that are in front of your eyes. Now, there is a controller that comes with this headset. It's actually smaller than most TV remotes that come out these days. It's very light, it's connected by Bluetooth. It takes a couple of AAA batteries. And with this remote, I can control the eSight headset. There's a big wheel right in the middle. I can push this up, down, left, or right. It's very bright against the dark gray of the controller. And by pressing the up and down buttons on this wheel, I can zoom in and out. By pressing left and right, I can adjust contrast. And by pressing the button in the middle, I can take photos to look at now or to view later. So I'm going to share my screen again here. For those who can see this, I am going to show some footage that I filmed earlier of some of the features in action. So first I'll show the zooming. You can see in this video, I'm actually using the touchpad. I'm going up to 4x here to 5x actually to view this picture of a flower, but the device actually goes up to 24x and you can choose what level of magnification you need, either using the touchpad on the side of the headset or using the remote control that comes with the device to enlarge an object, a face or a bit of text as big as you need to see better. Now next, I'm going to show off the color filters. You can adjust binary color filters on the camera to better make out text. So if you're at a restaurant and the menu is written in a color that's really hard to read, uh, like the gentleman speaking before me was mentioning with his magnifiers, you can actually adjust the uh, color of the text or invert the color of the text so that you can make it out a bit easier. And of course, while you're doing this, you can zoom in and out as much as you need to get a clear picture. The device has uh, four built-in color filters automatically, black, white, 
white, black, blue, yellow, yellow, blue, and grayscale is an additional option for folks. And the last footage I have here is of taking photos. So you can freeze an image on screen and zoom in on it. If you're having trouble holding your head steady on something that's really far away, this is a really useful tip. Or you can take a photo and view it in the gallery and save it later. So I recently was uh, at an event at Legoland with a young girl who had received an eSight 4 device. And she was using her eSight to take pictures of all of the fun uh, construction that there was all over Legoland so that she could take that home, upload these photos to her computer and share those photos with her friends. Additionally, you can take photos and save them if you're in a meeting and you're gonna to need to refer to those meeting notes later or if you're in class and you are worried about keeping track of your notes for later on when you're doing your homework. So there are some, those are some of the features that are available with the eSight device. As I mentioned, that's all done with the remote here. Um, as you may have seen in the video, there's also a touchpad on the side of the headset. We can use that to control everything that I've mentioned here as well. Now, additionally, there is an app on the phone for those tech savvy users out there. You can download the phone app. You can connect your phone app to the headset and you can use the app on your phone to control everything uh, that the remote can. You can also access some other features. You can see what your phone is seeing on the eSight headset. So you can watch like YouTube videos on the eSight. You can also connect this to your computer and you could actually use the eSight like a monitor. So you could check your email or again, watch Netflix or YouTube just on the headset itself. Now, as I mentioned before, the most important thing with this device is testing it, seeing if this machine is something that works for you. The best qualifications that I mentioned if you were in the previous session, if you have acuity between 20 over 80 and 20 over 800, you have central vision loss and you benefit from magnification, eSight may be a tool that could help you in your day to day. If you fit those criteria or you're close to it and you wanna test the device out, I recommend asking your doctor, see if they have a device on site that they can let you try. If not, if you wanna try the device at home, you can contact us, give our main line a call and see if you qualify for an in-home trial. So if it, you match our screening criteria, if there's a good chance of the device working for you, you can pay $99 and we'll mail a device to your home for you to test out for a few days and see if the device is something that you wanna use on a regular basis. While you're at home working with the eSight device, you'll be paired up with one of our specialists. They'll teach you everything that you need to know about the device while you're testing out for a couple of days. If you decide you want to purchase the device, we'll actually pair you up with one of our coaches after that. Our coaches are all low vision eSight users themselves. You get five coaching sessions with the device and they'll train you one-on-one -on, -one on how to use the device, whether you wanna use it in class, at work, just at home to check your mail or watch television, or if you wanna use it to, to go to the grocery store, garden, uh, even things like jewelry making or woodworking. We can train you on how to do those things with this device with one of our eSight coaches. So lots of different options to try the device, to be successful with this device. The first step is contacting us, talking to us about your options and seeing if this device is something that can improve your quality of life. For those who are interested in purchasing the device, the cost is just shy of $6,000. It's 5950. If you're interested in financing, we do have a lot of flexible financing options for folks uh, and some programs that may apply to you based on your specific situation. We do have good relationships with a lot of grants. Uh, if you know an individual that's under 18 years old, there are a lot of programs that can help there. Um, we have great relationships with local Lions Clubs, depending on your state. And the device is on the federal supply schedule with the Veterans Association. So if you are a veteran, contact us. We can help contact your VA to see if they'll pay for your device. This does matter state by state, but we do have a good relationship in a lot of states and we're happy to work with you to find funding to get a device at home for you. So 
that's everything that I wanted to cover in my overview here. Um, I think we're going into breakout rooms if you guys have any other questions, but again, I will throw up my contact information here again for anyone who needs that. So again, my name's Sam. My email is samuel at esiteeyewear.com. And our phone number is 1-855-837-4448. Uh, 